In this section of your final, you will be using a Bradford assay to find the protein concentration of the different protein sources. We will be using spectrophotometry to find the absorbance of different concentrations of protein. This is very similar to the color picker apps we've used before. It's just a fancier piece of equipment in the lab. So the first thing we need to do is to make a standard curve of known protein concentrations by looking at their absorbance in the spectrophotometer when using Bradford reagent. So in this image, the four tubes on the left in the rack are our four different protein sources that we are analyzing. Milk powder, egg powder, pea powder, and soy powder. The tubes on the right are solutions of known concentrations of protein. So I made these, I weighed them out, so I know exactly the concentration of protein for each of these standards on the right. We will compare each of these solutions in the spectrophotometer. You have to use glass tubes for spectrophotometry, so we'll label a set of glass tubes here. We will then add Bradford reagent to each of the labeled tubes to help us visualize the proteins using color in the spectrophotometer. We will then add a small amount of each protein standard and sample to the corresponding tube and mix it well. Here are the five protein standards in Bradford reagent. What you can see is, as the protein concentration increases from left to right, the Bradford reagent reacts with protein and turns more blue the more protein is present. So the bluer the sample, the more protein is in it. This piece of equipment is called a spectrophotometer. It measures the absorbance of light by a sample. And the more light is absorbed by a sample, the higher the concentration of the molecules that you are looking at. So a higher absorbance value means a higher concentration of your molecule of interest. And now we're going to collect data by using the spectrophotometer to measure the absorbance of the protein standards. You will be recording this data in your notebook. So go ahead and go to your next blank page and title it Final Bradford Assay. You're then going to draw this first data table. You're going to put in the title. We are going to be measuring the absorbance of different concentrations of protein standards at 595 nanometers, which is the typical wavelength for a Bradford assay. So pause the video and go ahead and draw this into your notebook. All right, the first step is to set the wavelength to 595 nanometers. And so just a little below 600. Okay, and then you want to make sure you're in absorbance mode. Okay, and then this is where the sample goes. So the first thing you would do is you would put in your blank, which in this case is our zero tube. Okay, so you put it in there, push it down, you close the lid, okay, and you're going to press the zero button. So this is zero A, 100% T. This is going to blank the spec. It basically tells the spectrophotometer to ignore the Bradford reagent. So it goes blah, and blank, flashes, and then goes to zero. Okay. And then you put in your next sample. So this is the 0.25. And you're going to record the absorbance value. Okay, so in this case, the absorbance is 0 0.201 absorbance units, or AU. You record that in your notes. You will now see data for the different standard concentrations of protein that you should fill into the notebook data table that you have created. First, we'll fill in the blank, which was zero concentration and also zero absorbance. Next, we get an absorbance of 0 0.205 for the 0 0.25 milligram per milliliter. So fill that into your data table as well. Next up is an absorbance of 0.439 for the 0 0.5 milligram per milliliter protein. So you'll fill that into the next line. Next is an absorbance of 0.743 for the one milligram per milliliter protein. So fill that into the next line. And then an absorbance of 1.141 for the two milligram per milliliter sample. So you'll fill that on the next line. And lastly, an, an absorbance of 1.661 for the four milligram per milliliter sample. Fill it in on the final line of this first table. Next, you'll start to complete the second data table in your notebook by finding the absorbances of our different protein sources. Below your first data table in your notebook, you'll want to draw this second data table as well. So go ahead and pause the video to draw this. Here are our four protein sources, soy, pea, egg white, and milk, in Bradford reagent. You will be completing the first three columns of the data table from this video as I show the results. For each protein source, in this case soy, you will do a visual analysis first. So go ahead and write soy on the first line of the notebook as your first protein source. And then in the visual analysis column, you want to compare the color of the soy tube 
to the colors of all of these protein standards, and you want to figure out where in this ranking it fits. Right? So is it between 0.25 and 0.5, or is it between 1 and 2? And try to figure out what number you would assign it based on a visual analysis. But of course, we also want to use our lab tools to try to get a more accurate picture of what the concentration would be. So you will also record the absorbance from the spectrophotometer for each of these sources that you can then compare to the graph you will make. So go ahead and record the absorbance for soy, which is 0.444 AU. Your next source will be P, so write that on the next line of your data table, and then complete a visual analysis comparing this P-tube to the known standards to determine a visual concentration. And then record the absorbance for P, which is 0.339 absorbance units. The next protein source is egg white powder, so you'll compare the egg tube to the color of the known standards and record that as your visual analysis. And the absorbance for egg whites is 1.488. And the last protein source is powdered milk. So again, compare the milk tube to the colors of the known standards for your visual concentration analysis. And then record the absorbance for milk, which is 0.988. And now, in order to determine the concentration of the samples compared to the standards, you need to graph your protein standard concentrations compared to their spectrophotometer absorbances. So go ahead and go to Canvas and make a copy of the final graphing assignment and you're going to go ahead and enter your data. Once you've collected the data in the data table, you're going to go ahead and graph. I'm going to demonstrate graphing with sample data. This is not the same data that you should have. Okay, so these numbers should be different for you. They're from previously in the video. I'm just using some sample data as an example. All right, so first thing you're going to do is you're going to highlight the headers and all of the data. Make sure you do not highlight the title. So just the headers of the columns and the data itself. And you're going to go insert, chart, and you want to make sure that a scatter plot pops up. You do not want a line graph. If your chart looks different from mine, you'll go over here in the setup menu to chart type, and you'll scroll down until you find scatter plot. Okay, so you want to make sure you have a scatter plot before you move forward. All right, and then you're going to go to customize, and there are a couple of things you need to customize. The first is the title. This title is not a good title. So you're going to double click here, and you're going to give it a better title. Should include the independent variable, dependent variable, and subject in a clear phrase. You also want to check that the axes are labeled with units. Okay, so the bottom one should say protein standard concentration in milligram per milliliter, and the side should say spectrophotometer absorbance in AU. If either of those are missing, you can go into customize, select this chart and axis titles drop down. And here where it says chart title, you can select horizontal axis title to type in this, and then vertical axis title to type in this. Okay. And now you're going to create a trend line for the data. So you're going to click on the data. So I'm going to double click on this. It should pop up the chart editor. Okay. If you can't find that, you want to look in the customize tab and find the series header or series set of tabs. You're going to open that up. Okay. You're going to scroll down and you're going to check the box that says trend line. Okay, that will add a trend line here. You're then going to scroll down and check show R squared. That'll tell you about how accurate your line is relative to your points, how linear your points are. All right, so here we go. What you can see is that my R squared value has been cut off. That is not what you want. Um, so in order to adjust that, you can resize your graph a little bit. You can click here and you can try to change the font size make it smaller, right? Something to make sure that your R squared actually shows and doesn't get cut off, okay? All right, at this point, you wanna double check that everything looks good, so make sure that your title as well doesn't get cut off. So if you need to resize your title, you can just double click on it and change the title font size, right? Make sure that your axis labels don't get cut off and that everything looks good, okay? You're gonna move this, you're gonna make sure that it's sized properly. And again, double check. Okay, so this has gotten cut off for me. So I'm going to change the font size to smaller. Okay, if it's still cut off, you want to try and resize a little bit bigger so you can see everything while still fitting it in the space. All right, so at this point, you are going to submit this as your final graphing assignment. So you're going to go File, Download as a PDF. This will help ensure that everything stays looking good. When you download it as a PDF, you then want to open the PDF and make sure the PDF looks right.
Okay, make sure nothing is cut off, your title is shown in full, all of that. If things get cut off in the PDF, you just want to come back and resize them here to make sure that everything looks good. You're going to submit that PDF to Canvas, and then you're going to copy the graph itself into your final analysis document. So the way you do that is you click on the graph itself, you find the three dots in the corner, and you select Copy Chart. Okay, you're then able to just paste it right into your document. And now you're going to use the absorbances for your different protein sources that you found in your data table in your notebook. And you're going to compare them to the graph that you have made to determine your protein standard con or your protein source concentrations for your different protein sources from your graphing analysis. So what you're basically going to do is you're going to take the absorbance values from the data table in your notebook and you're going to look at your graph and find where each absorbance value falls on the vertical axis. So let's say you have a protein source that has a spectrophotometer absorbance of 0.8. Okay, so what you do is you'd look at this vertical axis and find where 0.8 would be. So it'd be somewhere between 0.5 and 1, right? So maybe about here. You trace over as flat as you can until you hit the line, okay? Because all the points should fall on the same line, okay? You then trace straight down till you hit the horizontal axis. All right, and that wherever you hit the horizontal axis will be the protein concentration for that protein source. So if you had a, an absorbance of 0.8, it would be about maybe 2.3 or 2.4 milligram per milliliter, and that would be what you fill into your concentration from the graph in that last column of your data table. So you wanna do that same process for each of your protein sources, finding the absorbance on the vertical axis of the graph and tracing it over to the line and down to find the concentration, which you will then record in your notebook.